Chapter 8 of Stories from God's Holy Book by Josephine Looney. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Moses continued. Jo took up her story. As I said yesterday, the Jews marched along the road out of Egypt. It wasn't easy to travel then. A few had donkeys or camels to ride on, but most of them were on foot. It was hot and dusty, and they did not know the road to Palestine. But God guided them in a wonderful way. In the daytime, a cloud moved ahead of them through the sky to show the right direction. At night, it changed to a column of fire they could easily see in the darkness, so they didn't get lost. As soon as the Jews left Egypt, the king was sorry he had let them go. So he called out his soldiers and went after them. The soldiers rode along swiftly, waving their swords. They were sure they could catch the Jews and kill them. And did they? Bobby wanted to know. They almost did, Joe answered, just as they came to the Red Sea. The Jews were terribly frightened to see the fierce war chariots rushing toward them. But God was taking care of them. He drew down the cloud which was leading them. It came right around them and hid them from the soldiers. Then he told Moses to stretch his rod out over the Red Sea. Moses did, and a most marvelous thing happened. The waters parted. They drew back to the right and to the left like two walls. In between was a dry path straight across the bottom of the Red Sea. The Jews walked along the path to the other side. On their right hand and on their left stood great masses of water, but not a drop fell down on them. They got to the other side safe and dry. The soldiers rushed after them, but as soon as they got to the middle of the path, the waters closed up again and all the soldiers were drowned. It served them right, exclaimed Bobby. Go on, Joe. On the other side of the Red Sea there was a desert. A desert is a dry, sandy place where nothing grows. But the cloud led the Jews forward, so they marched into the desert. Soon they ate up all the food they had brought with them. Now they grew very hungry. So Moses asked God to help, and God did. That very evening hundreds of quails came flying around close to the ground. Quails are birds that are very good to eat. The Jews were able to catch many of them, and so they had a regular feast. The next morning the ground was covered with small white cakes. There were so many they looked like snow or frost all over the earth. The people bit into these and found they tasted like most delicious bread. The people were no longer hungry, but they were thirsty, and there was no water in the desert. Moses prayed again, and God told him to take his rod and strike a rock that stood there. Moses did, and water came rushing out of the rock. So now the people weren't thirsty either. I guess God can do anything he wants to, was Patricia's comment. Yes, dear, of course he can, Joe told her. It took the Jews many years to march through the desert to the promised land. God took care of them all the while. He gave them food and drink, and he gave them something much more wonderful. That was his law. God told Moses to lead the people to the foot of a mountain. Its name was Mount Sinai. When they all sat there, a thick cloud covered the mountain. God let loose his thunder and lightning, and the whole mountain shook. Then the sound of a trumpet was heard, coming from heaven. It grew louder and louder. At last, God's own voice called Moses to come up to the top of the mountain. There God told Moses what people must do to be good. We call these rules the Ten Commandments. God had carved them for Moses on two smooth pieces of stone. God said that all people everywhere must obey the Ten Commandments if they want to go to heaven. Do we have to obey them? asked Bobby. Yes, Bobby, everyone is supposed to obey the commandments, children and mothers and fathers, and every single person on earth. It must have been easy for the Jews to be good after that, Patricia observed. It should have been, Joe agreed, but the sad thing is that they weren't good. This is what happened. Moses stayed on the mountain forty days and nights while God explained all about his law. Down below, the people got tired waiting. So they turned away from God. They said they would make a God of their own. Pagan people used to do that, who knew nothing about the one true God. The Jews gathered up all their gold jewelry and melted it in a big pot. They made the gold into the statue of a calf. Then these foolish, wicked people, forgetting all about the true God, knelt down and began to say their prayers to the golden calf. Up on the mountain, God saw all this. He told Moses what the Jews were doing. He said it was a terrible sin. 
Moses hurried down from the mountain top and saw the people kneeling before the golden calf. This made him feel so badly that he hardly knew what he was doing. He threw the pieces of stone on the ground and they broke. Then he went up to the calf and smashed it to pieces. What did God do when Moses broke the two stones? demanded Patricia in excitement. God understood how Moses felt. He told him to get two more pieces of stone. Then God cut the words of the Ten Commandments into the new stones. God is very good, isn't he? Bobby said thoughtfully. He was more than good to the Jews, Joe answered, but they had to stay in the desert many years because of their sin. They deserved to be punished, Patricia decided. Then she added proudly, We learn the Ten Commandments in Sunday school. They tell you to obey your mother and father and to keep the Lord's day holy. I know that too, Bobby said, and they tell you not to tell lies or kill people or steal. Are they exactly the same ones God gave Moses? The very same ones, answered Joe, though that was over three thousand years ago. That's a long time, Bobby remarked. Did God tell Moses anything else, Joe? He told him how to build the first church and what to put in it so that it would be beautiful enough to be God's house. Today people still try to make every church beautiful because it is God's house. End of chapter 8